fuzzy detailing. And I have here two Tesla Model S's. S's? 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 But one is a plaid, one is the outgoing long range. And I want to talk about the differences I see between the two. They're actually so subtle that if you were to see either one of these cars, unless you knew what you were looking at and you were a big Tesla fan, you might not notice the difference. So I'm going to start right here at the front of the car. If you look at the headlights, I believe they're exactly the same. I can see no visible difference between the headlights on this car and the headlights on that car. But if I took like one little step back, you may notice the fenders. So the fender on this Plaid Model S sticks out more uh, than the fender on the outgoing Model S. Uh, I actually measured this and it's about three quarters of an inch more here than it is on this one. And that's to accommodate the bigger track that the Plaid Model S has. So it's actually a little bit wider than the outgoing S. Uh, that makes it a little more aggressive, gives it a little bit of a wider stance, and signifies that this car is meant for some serious performance. Uh, along with that, <laughs> this one was weird to me. I, I, I saw this. There's this really big camera on this one versus this, the camera on the outgoing one. This is actually the same camera that's on the 3 and the Y as well, but when you see it compared to this one, it just kind of looks puny. So I think, I'm not sure, this might be a better camera. I actually don't know. We'll have to wait until someone tells us otherwise. I think they did this, though. They had to put this in a bigger housing because along with the front of the car being wider, the back of the car is wider, and if it's set in as flush as the one on the outgoing S did, you might not have that great of a view because it would be obstructed by this wide fender flare back here. That is just my speculation though. I don't know if that's actually true, uh, but time will tell. Um, and then I'm gonna walk back up to the front of the car and we're gonna talk about the difference in the bumpers. So the Model S has actually had this design since the refresh in 2016. Not much has changed about it. Uh, you've got a few interior tweaks here and there. Uh, you've had a few motor, battery, and powertrain tweaks. Um, you had a couple things like the Cheetah come out. Uh, but generally speaking, it's looked just like this since they got rid of the nose cone. Uh, it's got the very recognizable fog lights, the mustache grill, the Tesla emblem, and everything else has pretty much been the same. Even when they did the refresh from the original Model S that had the nose cone, it was just this front bumper that stuck out a lot. That, along with like the painted rocker panels, were no longer plastic. And then it got a different rear bumper and a different um, rear diffuser. Now we step over to the Plaid. The front bumper actually looks a lot more like the Model 3 and Model Y design, uh, which I like it a lot. I, I don't know if this is more aerodynamic because it seems like all the Tesla cars seem to have this sort of design um now and i wonder if that's some technological advancement that they have or some aerodynamic advancement that they found that this just works better for their cars because teslas are really rated as the highest range as or highest range electric cars and to get there they do a lot of that with some wizardry with aerodynamics uh, so you have these inserts here that are different than the outgoing s the outgoing s actually has a fog light that looks like this and then you get these two slots here where this one just has the big fog light and then an air duct here uh, that flows air through. Uh, this car also has this really big grill opening. The outgoing S has that as well, but this one actually looks a little more aggressive and also has this duckbill lip that sticks out further. Um, I suspect this is going to be a curb magnet. Uh, that being said, luckily this car has the smart air suspension that will raise and lower it at certain places. You designate where this is a risk for happening. Um, along with that, you have the functional vents here, just like you do on the uh, outgoing S. I don't know because I haven't had this car in the shop enough. This is the first one I've seen to know whether this will open and close on its own and randomly turn on the fans when the car gets hot if you leave it outside on a hot day. Uh, I know the S's and the 3's and the Y's do that. But I don't know if this one does. Um, I know it has... A, I know it has a bigger radiator to help keep the battery cool, uh, along with let you do a bunch of launches over and over without having the battery degrade and cause performance issues. Uh, so that's 
a big jump for Tesla because all their cars traditionally did that. And they, they had track mode in the Model 3 that held up really, really well, made the battery do uh, performance go really well even when it was getting really hot. But it still wasn't quite enough to stop you from losing some performance launching the car over and over again. Where this one, I'm told, you can launch a thousand times and nothing bad. Well, maybe not. That's an exaggeration. But uh, you can launch it a lot without having any problems. Uh, one thing, too, on this car is, like, you notice all this stuff. It's hard to compare to Alex's car over here because we did a chrome delete on that car. All of this stuff on that his car looks like it's black already. The window trim, the grill inserts, this piece on the front bumper, the T. But this car, it comes black. This isn't vinyl. We had to do that on this one already being gloss black. They, it's good. they left this gloss. They made this gloss black, but they left the chrome T up here, which is unique because they literally went pretty far on the chrome deleted on this car as far as deleting everything down to the license plate. And I shouldn't say delete. They just replaced it with gloss black trim because um, the delete would insinuate that it was already chrome. But this car has everything already gloss black, which Tesla probably took a cue from the aftermarket. We've noticed that, uh, uh, you know, from time to time they update their cars and they do little tweaks and they change stuff that a lot of people have done at shops like mine, which is great because, you know, it makes the customer happier because clearly if so many people are getting it done, they actually want it. So I love seeing that these cars now come with gloss black trim and then Model 3s and Ys come with uh, satin black trim because it looks so much better. Like chrome is so 90s. Ooh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> not really the other thing i noticed that was different is uh the mirrors on this car they're actually more angled so uh a model the other the outgoing model s this was very rounded where this actually has a pretty hard bend here um so i noticed that was a little bit different uh again pointing out the gloss black trim on everything and then you come around here to the back of the car but they left a chrome t uh the back diffuser back here it's actually a lot more aggressive looking than the outgoing Model S. The bumper is almost identical. It's just a little bit wider. And, you know, me and Alex went through and measured all this stuff. This looks like it's wider, but you measure it, it's the same width as it is on the outgoing S. Uh, the hatch looks like it's a little bit longer. Nope, same dimensions. Uh, this, I'm, so I'm sure the cargo room inside this car is actually exactly the same too, even though it feels like a bigger car. I think that's because the interior is a little bit more spacey and has less... Uh, going on than the outgoing S, so it makes it feel like it has more room. Um, and then the taillights, they're exactly the same. Like, uh, I, I see no difference. So uh, I guess, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Elon already had a really good thing going with the way he manufactures some of the stuff that was on this car, and it carries over to this car. Uh, so it keeps, keeps things simple for Tesla. They're just wanting to produce a really, really fast Model S with some crazy technology in it and keep everything else simple, and that's what they did. Because, again, if you look at these two cars, it's hard-pressed to tell the difference between them unless you know what you're looking at. Uh, the wheels, that's another thing that even... I wish I had a performance car here, uh, but Alex wanted the extra range of long range, so he skipped out on the faster one so he could go a little bit further um, because he's boring. <laughs> so, uh, to compare the wheels on these... Like, uh, you know, these wheels on this car are a 245, which, if you know anything about tire sizes, the first number in a tire size is going to signify how wide it is. The next number is a 30, so that's going to say how tall it is. And then the following one after that is going to be like a rating of the tire, like how a speed rating on the tire, followed by the rim size. So this is a 295, 30. ZR21. ZR is the highest performance rating you can get. It's a 21 inch rim. 295 is a very wide wheel. This is the same width wheel that comes on a lot of performance cars. Versus this, this is more of an all season tire that's meant to last a long time and give you good mileage and stuff. Or this is meant to just make sure you stick to the ground when you launch this car or when you go around a turn. Um, you know, it's a Michelin Pilot Cup uh, or it's a Pilot Sport tire. Now, those are known really high-end performance tires versus these all-season tires that are not. And, you know, just to give you a tire size difference, I believe in the 21-inch option, you could put a similar tire on this, but I don't think it's this wide. I, I, I need another car here to compare, but I never remember seeing a Model S with a 295 on the back. I think 275 was as wide as I ever saw them. But, um, so this obviously has a little bit more beefy tire, more uh, surface area, more grip. Probably needed for the uh, plat pl 
plaid launch control or the drag strip mode that you see inside this thing um, where this tire is meant more for range. <laughs> I thought we staged these where we could do this, but I'm actually going to probably cause a dent in one of these cars if I try, so I'll do them one at a time. So if you look at the door panel here, this is the plaid model S. Uh, it actually has no door handle up here like you were going to see in that one. It just has the heptic touch button and then the emergency release. Uh, on a Model 3 or Model Y, this is actually a button. On this car, it's heptic touch uh, like you would see in kind of a phone. Um, it has this uh, ambient lighting that's back here along with carbon fiber insert. This is cool. This is like a plaid insert. Haha, <laughs> I get it because uh, this is a plaid car. And then you have a speaker grill <laughs> along with... Um, a very wonky rubber gasket and I'm not sure how I like this this is a little different than it is in that car like it's just the plates there on top of the carpet um, it look I I can't place my finger on it but it looks different than the other one so let's see why it looks different oh also this car comes standard with the noise insulated glass that you now get in the model 3 or the model Y so that's probably why when I drove it it felt so much quieter than this car does ah Here's why. So on this door panel, you don't have a haptic touch button. You've got your power window buttons, uh, and then you have a normal release door handle. Uh, and then, instead of just a plate being here on top of the carpet, you actually have all this trim here. Uh, so that actually kind of makes sense because the car's a little bit wider. That might be why you have more room in there. You have like an extra quarter of an inch back there because if the front fender and the tracks wider maybe the interior is too which is why it looks that way i don't know i don't know uh maybe one day we'll find out when someone who's a more thorough car reviewer than i am goes through and checks it out but just taking a look inside of here you can see this looks like a uh, model s which is a very simple interior actually by all measurable standards of luxury cars this is super simple it's very well laid out it's got the two big screens you've got your stocks that control a lot of stuff uh, you got a few buttons on your steering wheel uh, but this one taking cues from the model taking taking cues from the model 3 and the model y um, not quite as simple as one of those but pretty close there's no stocks uh, you just have a couple buttons on the steering wheel and everything else is controlled from the screen uh, also the center console very much looks like a Model 3 or a Model Y. You just have a very open phone charger, or hazard button, and then the center console for some storage space. Uh, so it's similar to this car. Uh, the cup holders, actually, where are the cup holders in here? Ah, right there. So you have to open the lid to get to the cup holders where they're um, always exposed. where they're always exposed on the outgoing Model S uh, underneath uh, your armrest. You can also see the seat design is a little bit different in here. Um, these seats are perforated too, which we haven't seen that in a while uh, from Tesla. Last time I saw them do ventilated seats was in a Model X. And I said that in a couple other videos, but it's still unique because I, I, I don't remember why they had some problem with their last ventilated seats where they quit making them very quickly. So I wonder if that's going to be the same fate as those. That being said, if you order one of these and you want those perforated seats, you probably should order them while you can, just in case. I, I just remember there were some people upset they couldn't get the ball chilling feature in their Model Xs uh, because Tesla discontinued it for whatever reason. And uh, in here, you do not have perforated seats. Balls definitely can get hot, heated seats, uh, and, you know, it's a similar design. It's a comfortable seat, though, because the first-generation Model S's, I've worked on enough of them to remember, had horrible seats in them. So when these seats came around in the uh, first dual-motor cars, they were so much better, like infinitely better than the outgoing seats. Uh, so there's no problems with these. These are actually a great design, and those follow that lead, and I think they're just improved on a little bit because it looks like it's a little bit wider, it looks a little wider than this one, but I'd have to measure it to be sure. But it looks like it's a little bit wider. That could also be just because this one's white and this one's black. And it's kind of an optical illusion I'm seeing there. Um, and then you go to the back of the car, which Alex's car only unlocks one door. So in the back of this car, you have a roomy three-row bench seat. 
You have two cup holders. You have elevator music playing that Alex listens to on the way to work. <laughs> Maybe while watching porn. I don't know. <laughs> we just have to ask him. <laughs> and then in this one, you have the same sort of bench seat, but they look you have a lot more support for the uh, two main seats, actually. I think Tesla's encouraging you just to have two people back here because they also have the armrest that folds down that has cup holders and they're very big and comfortable. And if you look, you have the side support in here versus in this car where the back of the seat is actually flat. Along with that, you get Netflix and Hulu and Twitch and YouTube all at your fingertips in the back of this car, um, which, you know, it's, it's, it's actually a really cool feature if you're doing a road trip, kids, whatever. Um, you have some entertainment options in there without having to give them an iPad. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It looks similar to the outgoing Tesla, but you kind of expect it. Tesla did such a great job designing this car originally that it's hard to make it much better and still achieve their goal of aerodynamic efficiency, that they're getting the really low drag coefficients on this car. Um, so they just made it a little bit better. They put giant motors in it. They improved the technology and the battery, and you end up with a car that is ridiculously fast with some insane technology in it that no other car has. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe with OC Detailing. Please subscribe for more videos.